welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner, and we are back again for um, Summer's House, Martha's Vineyard, and this is season two, and this is episode three, Dishonorable Guests. And we pick up where we left off on the last episode, so it's day three of everyone being at the house, and um, Nick is still talking with Jordan and Summer about. Um, him being handsy when he's been drinking and um and really it does i mean so what happens here is that nick kind of feels weird about it because of the fact that he feels like that at the moment they should say something about it and not you know let it fester and he kind of feels a way that he found out the way he did versus them just you know being direct with him and talking to them and basically being passive about it. And I would say I kind of agree with him on this because I've been in similar situations where um, both sides of it, actually. I've been in a situation where um, it's happened to me, but I've also been in situations where um, I've been the one who's done that. And for me, the best method is to not necessarily do it at that very, very moment where drinking's involved, but if there's a closeness that's already there, because we also find it from Nick that they're extremely close and they hang out on a very, very regular basis. So it doesn't really make sense that um, they're acting like they don't really know him like that when in the end of the day, they kind of do, at least from his perspective, he feels that they you know, are close with him. And so... Um, from their perspective, they said, it's not creepy. It's not in a creepy way. Nothing like that. But Jordan, of course, in her confessional didn't say this part, but I feel like she, if she would have said that, that part, it would have made a difference. Um, but also, I guess she's kind of concerned that it might cause more conflict. It's more or less him being handsy and him being in a relationship. It's not really about him being touchy. It's really that he's doing this when he has a whole entire girlfriend. And the guys kind of already said that to him. And I think Nick received it, but I don't really know. But long story less long, it seems like that this little piece of their um, issues were resolved. And so they are good with that. Um, so then next here we have Shanice. She's venting to her mom about what happened with Summer because she still hasn't talked to Summer about that comment that she made about her being the worst dress. Um, she's doing all this while she's getting ready for a neon party. So she's throwing her first party and finds out, we find out later on that this is literally the first party she's ever thrown, like ever. And um, the neon party um, every is basically everyone wearing neon type thing. And we find out also while she's talking to her mom, how super close she is to her mom. Her mom is sassy. So I kind of get where Shanice gets um, her, like it, her sassiness and, and like kind of independence from. And Shanice does say as such. Um, so after that, um, Nick does talk to Preston because Preston wants to check to make sure everything went okay. And also wants to make sure that, um, him being the messenger was not received the wrong way and everything's all good. Um, Joelle and Alex are being flirty again and the party be as the party's beginning and the party, it seems to be lit. And I mean that literally because it's a night party that they're doing. So they wait till night to do this. And, um, it was raining on and off that whole entire day. Um, and it did actually end up ringing again while they were out there, but it was fine because it was a neon party with slip and slide and foam. So they're already wet. And this is a summer, mind you. So it really wasn't much of a difference here. Um, the only thing is some of the girl's hair, particularly Jasmine, she's like, okay, this is going to make it where it takes me longer to do my hair now. Because some of it that's in her hair is her hair. The other part is not her hair. And, you know, black girl problems. And so anyway. From there, um, she, our mom, um, Amir states that they're going to have a slip and slide contest and they're going to be divided into two teams. There's going to be Team Amir and Team Shanice. And as they're getting ready to do this um, 
contest, and they really start the pro contest, Shanice leaves her own party and um, proceeds to go to the door to um, let her two friends that she invited over there, which was Christian and Hendrix. And so she doesn't even really participate in the party. So as a result, Amir's team wins. And Amir is so proud of himself because he is such a competitive guy. And it shows, but then he shows his ditziness again in the confessional and it's quite comical. He basically is like, yeah, there is an I in team. And then he spells it and it's like, friend, that's not how you spell team. <laughs> he spells it T-I-E-A-M and it's like, no. Um, anyway. So then from there, um, as Christian arrives, Joelle is filling him, mind you. She is filling him. She starts flirting with Christian immediately. And this is shortly after she was flirting with, um, with Alex. And this energy from Joelle, I am liking her so far. So far, so good. I'm liking her. Now, later on, I'm sighing her because I'm like, girl, you and Jordan seem like you might be cut from the same cloth. But anyway, neither here nor there. That's just a side note. But that is where the episode really starts um, going. And then from there, we go on to the next thing. All right, next. So Joelle and Alex are flirting again. And Summer walks by and literally kills the vibe. And some, so, as a, so after that, um, so that, that briefly happens. And this is after the party's kind of much as pretty much is wrapping up and they're getting ready to go out. Um, some, the, some of the people, everyone. So the people who stuck around did not go out with summer Preston and Jasmine. They all decided to stay in the house and the rest stay out until basically two fifty five AM. And then they're back. And so then next it's day four. And it's the morning and the guys are cleaning up because they left the house looking, well, not really the house, but really the outside looking crazy um, because they decided to go out immediately afterwards. And um, then we finally see Nick running. Yes, Nick. Yes. Okay. For those who don't know, I think I say it shared on either last episode or episode before that. I do have a huge soft spot for, for Nick because he is a runner and I do love how he dressed. He, the man can dress. So yeah, <laughs> I ain't gonna hold you. I do like the dorkiness and the quirkiness. That is Nick. I respect it. And I love that he's a runner and I could tell he's a runner when that slender frame is runner-esque. But anyway, we get to see him running and um, he has like this crop top thing going on, which child, that's very normal for like a, a guy runner. It's not even a big deal, especially if it's really, really hot. Yeah, you're going to do what you need to do. It's either that or you run short, um, shirtless. But anyway, so then while this is happening, Shanice and Jordan are talking about summer and... Um, Jordan's kind of trying to be the the um, person who's trying to be level-headed and say like, Shanice, yeah, you need to like talk to Summer about what's going on. Don't bottle in. Just say what needs what you need to say. And Shanice is like, yeah, I know. I know I need to talk to her. And Jordan does share that her and Summer have a whole entire blow up right before they got to this trip. But they're good now, which, child, I don't know about that because we found out towards the end of the episode they're really not good. Um, but basically we find out before this, before the show and while they're still hanging out a lot because Jordan and, you know, summer became really close, um, in between, um, the show and now, um, season one and now, and apparently, um, summer was making out heavy with one of her friends, like in the car. And then from there proceeded to like make out really, really heavy in front of her building. And, um, Jordan found it disrespectful and I will say this <laughs> cause yeah, I've been in both sides of it. I personally in today's day and age don't really love PDA anymore, even though I occasionally am guilty of doing it. And I mean, I'm like, yeah. I'm guilty of doing the PDA, but I understand where Jordan's coming from. It is a respect thing. But at the same time, I do 
based off of how Jordan reacts to situations, I can see how they would get into a whole blow up because Jordan, the way she, Jordan reacts, her reactions to things is 20 on 10. It's not like a just chill, we're, it's all good, no big deal type of thing. She has a huge tendency, and I mean like a huge tendency of kind of being, she gets loud very easily and it comes off kind of disrespectful. And we find out later on in this episode that Summer feels that way whenever they do have conflict. But anyway, so then while this is happening, um, Amir is, the the others are in the car, um, basically going on a grocery run. And Amir asks Joelle about both Hendrix and Alex. And Joelle basically is like, yeah, Hendrix is the type that wants wants to feel wanted and wants you to go after him. And she just isn't that type of girl. And I was like, good for you. I'm not either. Don't I'm um, I'm not gonna be the girl for you on that either. Younger me, yes. Today's day and age, oh uh, hell no. You you need to come correctly with me. Um, and then with Alex, um, she's you know trying to get temperature where things are going on with that and all the guys are basically kind of gassing her up saying like yeah he seems to really like you this that and this and uh and i don't know if they really talk to her about that i mean i'm kind of confused if the guys i feel like the guys kind of set her up i'll be honest um and i don't know if this was a good conversation to have this early on it's only been day four of being in the house but this question alone is I'm like, girl, don't do it. Don't do it. Because we know that she knows that her, that Summer and Alex have already hooked up. And she already knew that that was a contingent, that was kind of a problem for her. So that that's already a problem and you know that's a thing. Why are you still even entertaining it? Um, but I get it. I get it. The loins want what they want. So anyway, um, so as this is happening, Jasmine, so while this is all in the car while they're going on the run and, um, but also Preston is in the car stating, you know, cause Joelle asked about how will summer feel about all this? And Preston's like, she's not going to care. And it's like Preston saying this, and I know summer said it too, but. I just feel like Joelle, she's super naive. And we find out how naive she really is. She is super naive and she's not reading the room. The way um, some are saying one thing, but her actions are saying another thing. So I would just leave it alone. But anyway, so while this is happening, um, Jasmine is talking to Jordan and Summer about Mariah, and co Mariah coming back to the house. Now we, from those for those who watched last season, Mariah was on in on the show originally with the group, but she got kicked out because her and Bria had a confrontation, and um, she kind of mushed her, um, and, and it was really over Amir. Amir um, mixed the how the guests is closed with the dog stuff in the laundry but like didn't say anything about it and so mariah confronted um bria think it was her who did all that because it's bria's dog milo and it turned out it wasn't even bria and so the whole confrontation pretty much happened for nothing um and amir was right there didn't say or do anything about it so from the jump, everyone kind of felt a way about it. And, um, so, and this is Jasmine's best friend, by the way, that got kicked out. So she ended up kicking out her whole entire best friend to appease the get to appease Bria and everyone else. Um, so that's what happened there. And then Summer mentioned that, um, Bria wants, Bria and Shanice wants Phil to come back. And Phil was a whole entire other case. He was super disrespectful. He got there really, really drunk, like out of his mind drunk. It, honestly, looking back, if you look at the footage, it seemed like he was kind of blackout drunk. He took it upon himself to do number two 
in um, Nick's bathroom, did not flush it, just left it there, total disrespect. And then from there, then um, basically got in an argument and altercation with almost everyone in the house, minus Bria and Shanice. And then the next day, he doubled down and didn't apologize. So he got kicked out. He wasn't even there for a full 24 hours. He was there for like maybe like 22 hours, not even that. And so Jordan and Jasmine, they're talking about it. They're not sure about it. Jordan especially because Jordan was the one who got in a whole entire, she almost, got, she got a whole entire confrontation with Phil about him coming. But anyway, so then we find out that's going to be a conversation and it's kind of the reason for the name of the episode, Disarmable Guests. And so the grocery crew is back. So fast forward, they're back. And Bria, not Bria, but Noella gives Alex a sandwich. Alex states he doesn't really like tofu, but it's a thought that counts. And both Summer and Jordan are both hating, in my opinion. But I did notice that he did not say thank you. So they had a point. So... Because his reaction was not the reaction I personally would be looking for. And I wouldn't pursue him any further with that reaction. He says the thought that counts, but I never, I didn't hear a thank you get mother, muttered out of his, um, out of his mouth. And so for me, I'm just kind of like, um, okay. And so, but they're making it seem like this, see, he's rude. He's not even like, a, he's not even doing this, that, and this, and, uh, and it's just kind of like, I kind of get it because he wasn't expecting anything from Noella, but at the same time, he's like, uh, I don't really like this, but he still should have said thank you. So that was the only part that was missing. But of course, Summer's putting 20 on 10 because her feelings, her unresolved issues and feelings towards um, Alex. Anyway, so then from there... Um, Summer shades, shades and says something in confessional. This is why, why you think I wanted you to have him? And I'm like, girl, Summer, Summer has issues. She really has issues. Um, but anyway, we'll get into that in a little bit. So, okay. I know I mentioned Summer has issues. And to me, what I've noticed so far, and I didn't want to go into like my deep dive, but I'm going to go into it right now. Summer has a horror. She does not know how to communicate. She is not a good communicator at all. That is one of the main things I've noticed. Her communication sucks. Her communication does not even match her actions like ever. I've noticed when it comes to this show or in general, at least from what I'm seeing on this show. And also too, like she is shady, but I don't think she even knows how shady she comes off as. I don't think she really knows it. That's the thing that's wild. She says things, but she doesn't realize that comes off like very mean girl and shady. Like, her comment in the confessional, why do you think I wanted you to have him? Why would you want to pass a, a guy that you think is pretty much like an F boy to one of your friends? That's not friend behavior. That doesn't even make any sense. And so, yeah, I'm not, I, I want to like summer because last, last summer, or last season, summer house, I was liking her, at least what she was putting out there. And this season, I'm like, ooh, I don't like her. I don't like her. Um, Jordan, I'm starting to, starting to warm up to her a little bit more. Um, Bria, I am starting to warm up to her a little bit more. And um, Jasmine, mm, I don't know. I still need to see more from Jasmine to know how I feel about her. Um and then the guys, I don't really have much of an issue with most of the guys. It's just, I really wish there was more single guys on the show. Um, I love Nick. You already know I like Nick. Amir, he's the comedic relief we need, but him being in a relationship does kind of um, change the way he acts just a little bit, but he's messy and he's the mess that we need. Preston, we know we, we love him. Um, and then Alex, <sighs> other than his sex appeal that he provides to the house because like there is definitely an allure to him um 
I don't know what else he really brings. He's just kind of just there still to me, in my opinion. I, there was someone who was there last season who was Jasmine's friend who was like, I think the um, flight attendant. I want him on the show again. I, I forgot his name, but I, I'll, I'll put it in the description here or I'll, I'll put it up here later. But yeah, I wish he was still on the show because, oh my gosh, he now was fine. And he, I thought he was single too. Um, and he was the voice of reason that I'm noticed is not here on this season other than um, Preston. And Preston cannot be the only voice of reason. Um, they need to have more than one of those. But anyway. So now Jasmine decides um, when everyone's back and everyone's settled in and has some food that she's going to put together a house meeting. And no one is looking forward to this house meeting. Everyone's like, oh my gosh, no, I don't want to do this. Um, they're like the spirit of, um, oh, I forgot his name. Silas. This, Yeah, the spirit of Silas, which is Jasmine's husband, is still in the house because that was his whole thing to do a house meeting. And so, and even Milo had a confessional and Milo the dog, he was like, <laughs> I kind of cackled there. But anyway, so Phil as being, um, as Shanice and Bria's guest is the initial conversation and no one outside of them, really two or three wants him there. Um, Summer doesn't really have an opinion. Um, well, she tries to like state her opinion way more than she should because she wasn't even there when all this was happening. Um. Yeah, Summer tried to interject. Side note, that's the other thing. With this whole entire thing, with um, this little bit here, with the house meeting. So um, Preston really doesn't want him there. Preston never felt comfortable. He straight up said he never felt comfortable, so he spoke up, which gave everyone else the power to speak up as well. Um, Nick really didn't want him there, but I'm glad Preston spoke up first because I don't think Nick would have spoken up if Preston wouldn't have spoke up because Nick was probably, was the one who got disrespected initially from, um, Phil, um, with, with that whole situation. And then, um, Alex spoke up, spoke up. Like this was probably the most dialogue I've got that we've gotten from Alex so far. He's like, no, I'm not dealing with him. I don't want him around. I don't like his vibe. I don't like that. He made everyone uncomfortable. He basically made it where this into like a self space when everyone, everyone can move here freely. Cause like for the most part, especially up until this point of the show, everyone has been moving freely. There's been conflict, but it hasn't been nothing that they haven't been able to really like, you know, iron out. So it's kind of giving, why are we doing all this? And why are we inviting this BS when we don't have to? So I totally get that. Anyway, so then from there, um, we have, um, we talk about Mariah. And, oh, long story less long, the vote was, yeah, no, Phil's not coming. They voted a no. And Shanice and Bria obviously look annoyed, but... Bria is not as annoyed. Like, Bria is annoyed about this decision. And then next it goes to the Mariah conversation. And really no one has an issue with Mariah other than Bria. And Bria is annoyed that they're not considering her feelings. And so she just kind of walks away. But she's like, I'm okay with it. If there's a conversation, there's an apology. Even though she clearly is not really okay with it all the way because she feels a way... What Bria's doing and what she has been doing this whole time with this situation, which has been so annoying, and that's the reason why she was able to get away with getting Mariah to leave the first time around, is she compares the situation of Phil to Mariah, and they're not the same situation. Um, the only difference is, which Bria is entitled to this, is that Mariah did put hands on Bria, but Bria was off in her face, though, for that to happen. And it's like we're... We're pretending that that part didn't happen. And that's the part that Bria has not taken any accountability for at all this whole time. And also, too, I don't understand why Bria is putting all this energy about Mariah and has not yet really approached Amir about it because the argument happened because of Amir not stepping in and stating what the thing was. 
So it's been kind of a thing and it clearly has not been resolved. So this is getting re-ironed out again. But anyway, so, um, the house meeting was pretty much successful this time around, but also helped that they decided to do this house meeting before they all start really drinking. I would think that would help quite a bit. And then from there, um, Preston actually does stay afterwards. I think he's talking to Amir about how he was super upset about the idea that even Bria and Shanice would want him there. And even Alex mentioned it earlier on, it makes him look at them two differently, that they even want that kind of chaos there. And um, I would agree. I would look at both of them differently too. That's kind of weird. And, um, but Preston's super upset because... Phil was saying some disrespectful things and saying some things that were very like triggering for Preston. And he felt like this is like, it reminded him of how people used to bully him, bully him about being gay. And Preston's like, it really, and you know, he feels a way that he's the only gay guy in the house because he would, you know, maybe have someone to talk to a little bit more about why he really doesn't want Phil there, but he never felt safe with him being there. Um, but then after talking, um, so then after this, Shanice and Bria contact Phil to let him know he's not going to be welcome at the house, even though he's still going to be at Martha's Vineyard, but he's going to be at another house. So they're still going to like hang out with them or whatever. And Joel is there with them. And we find out that Mariah was going to be there regardless. She booked her ticket five days before, four or five days before they even had the conversation. And they were going to like show up together. That was the original plan. And Bria and Shanice, but Bria especially is super pissed. She's like, really? Because Bria and Jasmine have had a conversation since and they've gotten really close and gotten cool again. So she feels like she feels like she's got she was being set up. And we also find out from Phil, again, this is all according to Phil that Phil and Mariah talk to each other all the time. And Mariah told her that, um, told him that, that, you know, yeah, I already had the ticket or whatever. And again, Bria feels played. And honestly, at this point, I do kind of agree. The communication should have been there from the jump. Like if, honestly, Jasmine, if you wanted to invite Mariah, there, there didn't need to be a house meeting about it. You should have like asked about it initially when you knew you, you wanted to invite her and not, and then around the time where you brought and, and also around the same time you brought the ticket and, um, or even really before you brought the ticket. Um, but I kind of get why Jasmine did it the way she did it. So yeah, because we find out later on why she did it that way, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. We'll go on from there and we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> All right. So they're getting ready to go out for dinner and for some drinks and then eventually go out clubbing afterwards. And Jordan is in the restroom getting emotional, having an emotional moment because her hair is literally falling out because of her alopecia. And she's, you know, really talking more about how, for a while, for a long time, wigs were an option. Now it's not an optional for her. And she's just getting in her feelings as she, you know, almost didn't even want to go out, but she was like, no, I'm going to rally. I'm going to go out. But you know, it's still really hard. And I do feel for Jordan when it comes to this. And I do like that we're seeing this side of her. It's unfortunate that it takes something kind of messed up to see a softer side of Jordan, but I am appreciating seeing that softer side and she's sharing her story because this is something that um, a lot of us women, particularly black women, suffer from um, alopecia. Um, and also side note, like a lot of our protect, our favorite protective hairstyles can cause it if you do it too much and you have them too tightly. Um, for I've been kind of transparent about it, even when I was talking about me and doing my hairstyles. For so, for those who don't realize, I also do um, on my YouTube channel. I do have a get ready to go outside series with me, and I do do a lot of protective hairstyles. I do them on my own. I don't get them done. I actually do them myself. And very earlier on, I realized that 
Yeah, you can cause some traction. I think it's called traction alopecia, where you basically, um, as a result of the over pullage of your hair and not hydrating your hair enough and whatnot, um, you're still taking care of your hair, but it's really the over pullage of your hair and putting the protective styles on back to back to back to back to back without letting your hair rest and breathe can really, it can cause, um, traction alopecia where it's similar to like the hereditary kind that she has but um the difference is you still could eventually get your hair to grow back but it's it's still depending on how badly the damage is because you still ca could cause permanent damage but anyway i do say all that to say that i feel for jordan and i'm glad she's sharing her story with this and then anyway so while this is happening Oh, so after this happens, everyone goes out to, everyone goes to dinner and goes out. And at the dinner, the food looks good. I saw some lobster tail. I mean, I saw some lobster rolls. I, yeah, the food looked good. The food, oysters. Oh my gosh, I love oysters. And they're on the East Coast, which that's the pl best place to get the oysters. So yes, they're eating good. And then Shanice in the group are recapping the party. And Shanice is proud of herself. And I already mentioned that Shanice was super extra happy because it was her first party that she's thrown. And then Bria decides at this moment, she's going to talk to Jasmine about the Mariah thing. And she's like, so did you already invite Mariah before we had this meeting? And Jasmine is kind of dancing around it a little bit. She's like, yeah, no, I wanted her here. Um, I brought the ticket probably like a day before we had the conversation, which was a lie. She brought it five days before, but in her confessional, Jasmine does stay. And this is where I said, we're going to get back to it. Jasmine states, I literally brought it, the ticket ahead of time because it's economical reasons. If after the house meeting, everyone was said no, I would have just canceled the flight, which I actually do believe Jasmine at this moment. I think she would have done that. Um, I mean, she already kicked out her best friend season one, so there's no reason why she wouldn't do that. But Bria is so convinced that she was going to invite Mariah regardless of the house meeting. And the house meeting was more or less just for, like, Phil. And the way Bria is riding so hard for Phil, you would think Phil's her man. I don't understand this. <laughs> Phil's not her man. Simon's her man. But she's just like, Bria is acting like a whole entire child about the situation. And I don't, I don't get it. But anyway, so of course, them talking about Mariah and Phil, really Phil is just causing all this chaos around the dinner table. And by the way, I misspoke. So I said earlier, um, Summer was chiming in during the house meeting. No, she was chiming in this time a lot during this conflict that they were having at the table about um mariah and phil and it was all for nothing because just like summer you weren't there when all this was happening S stop it it's really annoying and shanice just kept shutting her down like dude why are you talking about this you weren't even there and anyway so they do finally kind of resolve it but not really bria fills away bria's texting on her phone her mom saying i'm ready to go home and she books like a ride to go home and so basically bria abruptly leaves and is like i'm going back to the house and preston fills away about it and super annoyed she's like okay if she's going to do this i want her to go back to new york this time and stop this crap because it's it's annoying. And we already are seeing that Bria and Preston, they're going to be going back and forth. Like, they're going to have conflict this season. You could tell. It's brewing. Anyway, so then it goes on. We go on, and then Shanice and Summer have the conversation that Amir encouraged them to have in front of the group. And... I really wish they would have not listened to Amir and would have had the conversation one-on-one. -on -one. But at the same time, based off of how Shanice acts, it seems like the conversation would have never happened because Shanice just likes to push conflict on the She likes to push it down, push it down, push it down. And I could tell Shanice is an Aries and she's an unevolved Aries because these are the things that she does or used to do or she's been doing are the things I used to do before I 
um, grew up basically <laughs> and, and, and actually let therapy therapize, you know, let the therapy work. And we also find out at this point that Shanice is in therapy now. So I'm like, oh, okay. So she realized things are not quite right. I'm, I'm glad she actually is getting the therapy because at first I was like, child, the way you're moving, you really need therapy. Like, and, and this isn't really to shade her or anything like that, but it's just like the way she moves is just very, it's not good for her. Like, and I'm, I'm glad she, we, I'm glad during this conversation with Summer that it does appear that she is going to therapy. And also too, Shanice was very direct with when it came to it. She's like, look, Summer, the reason why I was extra mad at you wasn't just about the, the way I dress thing. It was more or less the fact that you know that I don't have a job now. Like, I don't have a job, so I can't afford to buy new clothes, even if I wanted to buy new clothes. So I felt a way that you even, like, brought that up. Like, it was kind of rude. I felt like that was some mean girl thing. And I also think that there was some unresolved tension here between us. And Summer really tries to, like, give light and says, no, 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 I love you. I'm sorry. I just wish... You know, I, I, I feel bad that you felt that way. I'm sorry, this, that, and this. And uh, and then she's like, I don't even know why you would feel a way about the way you dress. Like, you have the best body in this house in front of everyone. And then everyone starts laughing and look at her like she's crazy. And then literally Summer blows up. Summer just blows up. And Jordan's like, girl, what is your problem? Because um, <laughs> everyone's confused. And... But anyway, so I I think it got resolved, but I don't know because Summer, I don't know. Something's off with Summer. I don't, like, Shanice, if Shanice looks like the more rational one, it, it makes me side-eye you even more because, she, although I will say this, Shanice definitely seems like the type once she does get her thoughts together, she's ready to talk things through. She could talk it through very well. And it seemed like she did right there. But at the same time, the way Summer reacted, I don't know. That was kind of weird. So anyway, they talk it all out. And then the rest of the crew stay outside and go out dancing. Um, Alex are flirting. Alex immediately starts flirting with some of the other patrons at the club. And Joelle starts feeling away about it, which is really weird because I'm like, girl, you were just literally doing the same thing a little bit ago. And she knows that she shouldn't feel away um, because she literally did that the night before. But then she does, she goes on to talk to Alex one-on-one -on -one, and then she just proceeds to embarrass herself and puts herself completely out there for pretty much Alex to shut it down. And this is why I was like, why did you do this? So Joelle is pretty much very similar to, uh, to um, Summer. Both of them are playing themselves with the idea saying that they can like hook up and hang out and do things with other people and whip it and do it with other people and not get attached. But then Joelle in the same breath mentioned she, she is very ter territorial and you can't have it both ways. I'm sorry, but you cannot have it both ways. Either you got that dog in you or you don't. And you have to know the difference. Now, and you have to be able to compartmentalize your feelings and whatever and all that. And she, she, she pretty much says she ain't got it. I mean, the good news is she at least said all this right away so that Alex don't try to pursue her like that. But I just hate that she embarrassed herself like that. Um, and even brought it out there because of course, Joelle felt embarrassed because Alex reaction was not the reaction she was looking for. And I don't understand what reaction she thought she was going to get from him. Like, Everything kind of makes sense that the way he acts and everything. But Joelle then at this moment confessed that she's, you know, has a very naive spirit about her. And it was very obvious because this was very naive of her. But anyway, so then they all head back to the house and everyone else gets back at the house and goes back, you know, into the house from the car. But then Summer, Jordan, Summer and Jordan get into it in the car while um, Preston's in the middle trying to basically be the mediator. Summer's trying to articulate her feelings to Jordan, and she's doing a horrible job of doing so. 
because we also find out at the dinner table, I forgot to mention this, that um, while Bria was leaving, some of the girls went to like, you know, make sure she got to the car and everything okay. Um, Summer does state that she feels like that um, she feels that um, Jordan's approach to conflict is very aggressive but when she does it it's not perceived the same and it's like because and they had to explain to her like it's normal for jordan even though that might not be healthy they're expecting it because that's how it's not outside of how she normal normally reacts the problem is what they're having with summer is like girl that's not even not how you normally react so now you're reacting this way and everyone's looking at you like what the heck is that and I get that because last season, Summer's behavior last season, this season is not the same. So it's kind of giving like, we don't know you like that for you to be, we don't know which one is you because she was very Neil soul, very Zen last season and very chill. And this season she just is coming off as like a hot mess. So we don't know which one is her. And I will say this as someone watching, I don't know which one is you. So I'm just looking at you like you're crazy and it comes off like you're spiraling. And so basically she's trying to have this conversation with Jordan. I don't know why they're trying to have this conversation while they're both drunk. I don't get it. But anyway, they're doing it. It's not going well. And Jordan is shutting it down. And then Jordan's like trying to like stop and let her talk. And then Summer's like, stop interrupting me. And she's like, but I'm not interrupting you. And it just doesn't go well. And then Summer slams a car door and storms away. And this is where the episode ends as it to be continued. Yes. So Summer House, Martha's Vineyard is that girl. And it it's it's getting good. Um, anyway, uh, hopefully you enjoy this review. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka Mel and Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye.